Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Morales. I'm the Senior Application Specialist here at Epson. I'm joined today by our Product Manager for all F-Series products, uh, Mr. Tim Check over here. And today, we're going to be taking you through an exciting application that's uh, really gaining a lot of momentum in the direct-to-garment world, and that is film transfers. So we're going to show you some of the benefits of this, so how we can actually apply it. We're going to do a live demo of these film transfers on camera for you to see what the process is, what it entails, and how this can help open up and expand your business uh, to give you new opportunities and applications to discuss. So Tim is actually going to head on over to our work area where we will be applying uh, the work materials over there. This is going to be away from the actual printers. And I'll be here actually running the printing equipment. So for starters, what we're working with today is our SureColor F2100 series direct to garment printer. And we have some film transfers that we'll be printing on. Uh, to start off, uh, taking a look at the example that I have to my right, uh, this is an example of one of the film transfers. We'll show you some more up close on screen as we get through this process. But to start it off, why would somebody want to do a DTG film transfer? Well, as you know, DTG works great on cotton, 100% cotton, tri-blends, and all sorts of things of that nature. But when you get into some other little bit more difficult items to work with, that's where the film transfer comes into play. So today we're going to be showing you a few different items. Uh, we have some shoes that we can do with film transfer. We also have some 100% polyester moisture wicking type of garments. This works great on this particular process with those garments. Uh, anything that you might have a challenge with printing directly onto the platen, in other words, loading a garment, printing it directly, any of those types of items that you may have a challenge with, here's where the film transfer process really comes into play and does a really good job. So for starters, looking over to my side, I have a box of film transfers. And so we're gonna go ahead and grab one. And this isn't any type of film. This is a film that's specific to this process. So you may see on the box, uh, the acronym DTF for direct to film. That's what we are actually working with here. So we're gonna be printing onto the film. And then with that film, we're gonna use that to transfer over to our garment. So I have the piece of film here that I'm gonna start with. And there's actually two sides to it. One side is very high gloss very uh, shiny. And then the other side is more of a kind of matte textured surface. So we're actually going to be printing on the matte side for this particular application. And what we're actually going to do is something a little bit different than how we would normally print our direct to garment uh, prints. So we're actually going to be printing in reverse, we're going to print the CMYK first, followed by the white ink, and then we're gonna take it to the next step of the process. But let's start with the printing. So we're gonna take our film transfer and we're gonna head on over to our printer right here. And I actually have a piece of transfer tape that I've already left on my platen here that can be reused. So if I'm doing multiple transfers one at a time, I can use this same piece of tape, line up my film transfer. So I'm just gonna put my film transfer right in the middle of our platen. And then I'm gonna just tape this down right here. And then now we have our film transfer ready. And so what we can do at this point is we can send our file over to print. So now that we have sent our file over, thank you for that, Tim. We're gonna go ahead and press our print button. And I'm gonna open the cover here so that we can take a look inside while it's actually printing. So we're gonna send that on through and the platen's gonna to go to the back. And uh, as I mentioned, we're actually gonna be printing CMYK first, followed by white ink. And so this is a little bit different of a process than what we're normally used to seeing. And the purpose of this is because this is a transfer and this is ultimately going to go face down on the garment. That's why we need to print it in reverse. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I actually print this properly? Well, there's a number of methods that you can use to perform these actual prints. So what we're using in this case right now uh, is a RIP program called Wasatch and that will enable us to print with any layering order that we want. However, there are other applications that can perform this process as well. Uh, there is a Cathari rip, there's also an easy rip, a system that can be utilized for this type of process. And what's great about that is these print settings are built into the software. 
you already have the reverse print with the white ink uh, going last. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. So this is definitely an easy method in order to do this. This can also be done within our garment creator software with a couple of tricks and creating your settings. Uh, but either way, this is what we want to have uh, shown on our actual film. So you can see the CMYK printed down first. Now we're printing our white underbase, or in this case, this is actually the last portion of the print. And then once this process is done, we'll be able to take this print off and prepare it for the next step. Now, one thing to keep in mind that's important here is we do not need to flood white ink on these transfers like we would with a garment to get high opacity. And the reason being is the next step of the process is actually where we're going to get the rest of our white opacity, but also have it be able to stick to the garment. So now that this print is done, we're going to go ahead and remove it from our platen, just like so. And I'm actually going to hand this over to Tim, who's right. going to take us through the next step of the process. And he's going to be off camera in another area of the room. We want to make sure we don't do this by the printing equipment. Uh, so he's going to take it over there. And then he's going to walk us through the next step of this process now that we've printed. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to you, Tim. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, so as Paul was just mentioning, I am uh, quite a bit distance. I'm not doing this near the printer. What we're going to do next with this print is wet ink that's on here. And the neat thing is we're going to put a, we're going to sprinkle on some adhesive hot, hot melt adhesive powder to this. So the, the liquid or the wetness of this uh, ink is going to be able to uh, attract the, the powder and is going to stick to it. And so we're, typically you don't have to rush. You don't, it's not like you only got a minute before the uh, print comes out and you're going to do this uh, and put the powder on. You do have some time that you can work with this, but you don't want to be sitting here and printing it and then a day later trying to add the powder. Big thing we're gonna do with this powder is I have a mask. Uh, I know many, everybody, everybody has these. Uh, it is really important when you're applying the powder, whether it's using, we're using a, a little tub and I'm just doing this manually. There's also automated equipment that you can feed these she sheets through to be able to do the powder application and it just does it automatically through a, a conveyor system. Um, pretty cool stuff. But with that, we really wanna be careful to make sure that powder, you're not breathing that in. It is hot glue uh, or a glue powder adhesive. You don't wanna breathe it in your equipment, so your computer, your routers, your printers, you don't want that to go into the power supplies or any of the uh, printers are there as well. It can cause a lot of challenges. So I got my mask on. A product I'm using is, uh, we're using this hot melt adhesive powder. Um, this is a product I'm using from a company called EcoFree, but there are different brands. This one, we, we've been using it just because it does have the OECOTEX uh, uh, standard. It meets the health and safety uh, requirements for it. But a big thing, if you notice that little logo right there, you must wear a mask. They aren't joking about this. This stuff is uh, the texture, the consistency of basically like powdered sugar. So when you float this around, whether you're using a machine to apply the powder or you're, um, or you're doing it by hand, it, this stuff does get in the air a little bit. And that's why I'm in a different area away from the printing equipment. So I'm gonna just sprinkle, you don't need to put much on. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit down. Uh, and that was probably more than enough uh, for doing this. I'm just gonna close up my powder so I don't have an issue with it. And all I'm gonna do is just move this back and forth. And so you'll see that that powder, I just wanna completely cover the, uh, the material. I don't need a ton of it down, just enough to, to basically go through everything that we have. And then once that's up, so I have the backside of this has the powder on it. What I wanna make sure is that powder is gonna turn white. Um, and as Paul was mentioning, we don't need to put down a ton of ink uh, to be able to get a nice solid white plug coat. We just need to have enough ink so that the, the powder is gonna to adhere to this print. But if we have white filling in voids, that white is going to show up on, a, uh, on your finished garment. You don't want to do that. So I'm just shaking this off, just kind of a quick couple taps to remove any of the excess powder. And from here, all this stuff, it's kind of, if you, it's tough to see this on camera, but it looks like a powdered donut almost. It's a, a fuzzy. Uh, and all those little particles, those adhesive hot melt particles that are on this uh, film, what we want to do is we want to take those particles and turn them get them to cure so they become and congeal into a single layer, uh, basically a big, large film adhesive layer. And to do that, I'm gonna bring this print back over to Paul, who's gonna take us through the, the step to cure this transfer so we can use this in our future steps when we make our products. All right, and here we go. Great, thank you, Tim. All right, so now that we have 
this portion completed, the powder has been applied, we are ready to actually put it under our heat source and allow the heat to hover over it. So we're gonna actually just go right back here, slide out our heat press table, and then I'm gonna place the print right on top of the table, and then we're gonna slide it in place. So what we're doing here is we are actually allowing heat to hover over the garment and allow that powder to sort of congeal and dry. So that way it'll be ready for us to do the actual transfer. So this process will take a couple of minutes, depending on the type of garment that you are actually going to press to, that will determine the temperature settings that you will be using. Uh, when we ultimately press, we're gonna be pressing for about 20 seconds, but for this particular process to allow that powder to dry and fully congeal and be ready for the transfer process, uh, we wanna take uh, just a couple of minutes uh, in order to do so. And so while we're waiting around for that, uh, we're gonna kind of let that go. Uh, we have a couple of garments that we will get ready to actually perform the transfers on. So we just wanna let this sit here for uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, as we're going, of course, if there are any questions about the process, please feel free to enter those questions into the chat uh, box at the bottom of your screen. And we'll try to get those questions answered uh, towards the end of this. In the meantime, while we're waiting for the heat press to do its thing and hover over the powder to help finish that curing process, uh, I'd like to switch it back over to Tim. We're gonna show you a couple of close-up examples on screen of this process of what exactly it looks like. So uh, Tim, back to you. All right, well, thank you, Paul. So that heat process, there's a lot of, uh, as we mentioned, there's different equipment. We're showing this just using the equipment we already have, using a heat press and this powder, just a little tub to apply this. There is automated equipment, there's a flash cure to, to make the uh, uh, transfers uh, ready to go. But this is one of the outputs. This is a, a Gildan uh, 46,000 brand, 100% polyester shirt. The exciting thing to this is this is a red shirt. Most everybody knows these things are, are horrible to print to because of dye migration. And that's where the DTG transfer process uh, can really make this pretty exciting because we can get onto 100% polyester. There's no pre-treat box. We're able to do this at a lower temperature where we're gonna minimize the opportunity for dye migration. So polyester garments for sure, definitely one of the fun things to uh, work with. Another item that we have is just uh, kind of working with uh, like pocket hoodies. Um, and using this on a, this is a fleece, 100% polyester face with a fleece on the inside, super comfortable. Um, you get bright images, uh, easy to work with, but being able to do stuff off the garment, bringing in things like shoes. Um, anybody that's tried using printing onto a shoe using a DTG shoe platen, you can definitely do that uh, and it works. But the neat thing is this transfer, once we're done with the transfer sheet, we don't need to be, we can, it's easy to apply them to different types of materials and different shapes. So the big part is we wanna make sure that we're working with fabrics. The DTG transfers aren't really meant for rigid products, but on fabrics like nylons or printing onto other type of material like polyester or some other temperatures, just be aware of the temperature about it. So if you're working with uh, like windbreakers that may have polypropylene type um, materials, that's a much lower melting point. And you just need to be aware of, of what those temperatures are. So you're not gonna run into some issues with the product changing, changing the hand feel to it. So we're able to come up with many different types of ideas. These are just a couple of samples here. Uh, I'm showing this primarily with 100% polyester. And this is where one of the exciting things to this application is we have our DTG equipment. We can use it for printing onto normal cotton shirts, blended, tri-blends, really high-end uh, garments. And then with this DTG transfer process where we're creating the films, it allows us to separate it. So if you were doing an event where you wanted to bring these items, but you don't know the garments you're gonna to attach it to, you can print these items uh, or the uh, decals basically up ahead of time using this film transfer process and apply it to a garment without having a printer at a, a, an event, whether it's a festival or an event, you may just have a stack of transfers and away you go. Some customers are even doing things where they're just selling just the transfers um, and letting their end customers uh, apply the, uh, uh, that to whatever garment that they wanna use. We're gonna come back in a little bit, but I think Paul, I think we're, we're looking probably pretty good on on the uh, film transfer, the curing spot. Um, one of the areas that I think that we're, we're looking at, if you don't mind, um, see one of the samples that come back. This is uh, the cured uh, piece that we have. And as I said, the, the original, when I put this in that powder uh, that was on the surface of this, uh, of this transfer, 
was very much looked like a powdered donut. Um, it was fuzzy, very matte feeling. And with this, um, we can actually get, there's a little bit of a sheen and that's what we're looking for. Uh, if you do this regularly, you'll know the exact time and temperatures. Because we're using um, a heat press that we're also using for our t-shirts, the, the distance between the heating element that we're hovering between could cause some differences in time. So if the heating element's an inch away or if it's a, a quarter inch away, the amount of time it's gonna take is different. And that's why everybody's gonna have a little bit different settings. Uh, but in here, you can see, hopefully you can see where my fingers point, there's a little bit of a sheen to this. And that's how we know that this is no longer uh, uh, individual grains of that powder. It's now a large adhesive, uh, complete uh, film spot. I'm gonna bring this piece over uh, to Paul. And with these transfers, uh, before I bring it over, um, once this is done, if these are, are stored properly, meaning that we're not just leaving them out in the open, but you put these things into a drawer, you keep them uh, sealed up, you can use these transfers anytime in the future. Um, and so this is very much similar, similar. It kind of reminds me of the days when growing up when we used to go to the mall and you pick out your design from a catalog at the uh, mall t-shirt store. You pick out the design, they pull a transfer out, they apply it to the garment in a matter of a few seconds, and then you got your finished garment. Um, you can do the same thing with these transfers. We're doing one large print, but a lot of times printing a big gang sheet, um, like you'll see when I hand this back over to Paul, you'll notice that he has a logo on his shirt. That logo uh, that we have on his uh, shirt, we can gang up a whole bunch of those onto, the, uh, onto one of those sheets to be able to produce a whole bunch of logos uh, prints uh, very quickly. With that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Paul to actually, let's keep the, the action going. So what can you do with it? Now that you got that transfer, what can we do with it? All right, sounds good. Thank you, Tim. So now that we have our transfer, I'm actually gonna prepare my shirt. And as Tim mentioned, we're using 100% polyester uh, Gildan shirts right here for these examples. So first thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna take it over to the heat press and we just wanna remove some of the moisture from the garment. If it's been sitting in a box inside the warehouse, uh, we just want to get all of that out. So I'm going to just quickly sleeve my garment on the platen. And I have a piece of parchment paper off to the side right here that I will also use just as a little bit of a barrier of protection there. And we don't need to press this for very long. So it's just going to be about 10 or 15 seconds or so till we remove the moisture. And once we do that, then we are ready to perform the actual transfer. So now that we've done about our 10 to 15 seconds, we can go ahead and remove this parchment paper off. I have my garment ready to go. And so we'll take our transfer and we will kind of center this out right here, just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and put the parchment paper back on top of here. And then we're gonna slide it in and then we're gonna do this press for about 20 seconds. So because this is polyester, we're running the heat press at 285 degrees and the pressing time is 20 seconds with very minimal pressure. So our pressure setting on this heat press is at about one, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. For 100% cotton or tri-blends uh, or 50-50, uh, you can go with a little bit hotter of a temperature, about 350, uh, but since this is 100% polyester, we're actually doing it at 285. Okay, so there's our little beep there. So we're gonna remove this and before we peel this, it's important to note that this is actually a cold peel process. So we've pressed the design, it is onto the garment, but we're not going to peel it just yet. We want to wait for not only the film transfer, but also the garment itself to be completely cooled down before we peel this away. And that way we can ensure that we get the best transfer possible, that we don't lift anything, nothing uh, rips or peels away from our transfer. So with that, in order to give you a closer look, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this back over to Tim so he can take this over to our work table area and get ready for the next step. So we're still waiting for this to cool down. Every garment is gonna vary in terms of the amount of time it will take to cool down. Uh, roughly about 30 seconds to a minute or more should be enough time. And with that, uh, let me pass it back over to you, Tim. All right. So. This is where uh, if I've done this right, everything should go good. We're just about cooled down. It only takes the, uh, the polyester fabric cools down really quick, which is great. And as Paul mentioned, this is a cold peel process. So you don't want to do it when it's really hot. Uh, otherwise you could get some lift off of the, uh, uh, of the colors. What we're just going to do with this film, that's definitely cooled down enough. We're just going to start at one edge. We're going to uh, keep a high angle on here. So we don't want to more than 90 degree, 90 degree angle. So we're just going to start with peeling. 
and we just keep working our way through. All right. With that, I have a sheet that has nothing left on it, which is good. That's what we want is the transfer to completely give off everything that's on here. And we have our finished garment um, that has uh, the, our, our graphic has been applied and that's on there. It's really, it's gonna be there for, while we haven't done the uh, ISO testing for washability, many of the customers that are using this process are saying they're getting basically the life of the garment, lasting 50 plus washes uh, without any uh, uh, peeling away of this garment. So this is the garment, this, uh, this item that's on here, it definitely has a very smooth finish because the, when we pressed it, we have this film that's perfectly smooth on the one side. So when we press it, the texture of the film is coming in and, and being part of the uh, transfer. So this has a very smooth finish. It feels a little bit like a big sticker uh, that's on top of the garment. And so what we're gonna do, here's a little pro tip, but we have a way to kind of look at how do we make this feel a little bit more like a, a normal garment, a little bit better hand feel, maybe take off a little bit of the sheen to this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back to Paul that has a little bit of a pro tip on how to uh, make these, this feel a little bit less like a sticker and more like your traditional screen print type uh, uh, polyester garment. All right, thank you, Tim. Uh, so as Tim mentioned, uh, the transfer is done, but there's still one more thing that we can do to maximize the sellability and also the feel and look of this garment. And so what we're actually going to do, because it's really smooth right now and definitely feels kind of like a sticker on there, I'm going to actually load this back onto the heat press. So we will sleeve this on here. And then I'm going to grab my parchment paper. And this time I'm going to press it again, but only for about five seconds or so. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to help drive the image in seemingly further into the garment to allow some of that texture from the threads of the garment to actually come through. So we're just going to give it about five seconds, just like that. I'm going to take the parchment paper away. And so now we have our completed garment. And what we'll do so that you can actually take a a closer look at this. I'm going to pass this back over to Tim uh, to take over to the work table so that we can show you exactly what we did in terms of the difference of uh, how it looks now with the parchment paper. So this has a lot better of a hand feel. You can feel the texture um, of the garment coming through. It doesn't feel like a big sticker, um, but it's also helped the, the, uh, the design uh, really grip onto that polyester a little bit even better. Uh, if you notice, the colors definitely have a, a good pop, good contrast uh, that we have in here. Uh, the hair, the detail, a lot of this works really good. So this is what we're showing for 100% polyester uh, type garments, where this is a fantastic uh, additional way that you can take any of your, uh, if you're using any of the Epson uh, DTG printers, so whether it's the F2000, the F2100, even the F3070, our production uh, printer, you still use that for doing your traditional uh, DTG printing, but to be able to add on, and expand the ability to do 100% polyester athletic apparel. Uh, maybe this it could be a die sub cut and sew garment for a, a volleyball league that you wanna add on someone's numbers and name uh, detail to them, uh, to the backside. This transfer process makes it really easy to print a one-off transfer um, or to do many of these transfers very quickly. Well, we haven't done it here. This is a tear, lab tear away label product. We can tear this out and doing the inside neck label. If you're doing a private label, a private brand, this is a great way on one of those sheets, we could print up, you may be able to print 20 different neck labels uh, that go inside and simply just transfer that in here, just like you would with a traditional plastisol transfer. So a lot of fun things that we can do. What I'm gonna show you though, is just one little, little bit more. I'm gonna keep this uh, in the shot. This is what we're doing with our direct to garment transfer process, where we're working with the shoes, we're working with 100% polyester. What about 100% cotton. And so I want to just show, kind of show there's some areas where uh, there's definitely differences. And where we see this really excelling is with the polyester and some other materials and working on small spots like on the shoulder sleeves and neck labels, that this transfer process works really well. When we get into 100% um, cotton, this is a ring spun cotton shirt. And the exciting part is if we get really close in on this, uh, uh, this, this uh, our Wolverine here, our, our Panther, um, the center chest area, uh, this is using a garment knockout black. There's no ink there at all in the middle of this uh, garment. And so what we're seeing here is you have ink that's coming around on the outside, 
But in that center, it is completely smooth. There's no ink, so it has a very light hand feel. And with DTG, where we're printing directly onto this garment, um, this has a light hand feel to it, really soft on a really high-end shirt, and it feels good, it breathes. On that same garment though, if we move over and we print this onto uh, doing the film transfer process, there is a little bit of a difference. So one of the things about that film transfer, when we have that powder, that powder is gonna turn white. So we can't, we have to print black. Whereas on DTG, we don't have to, we can knock out the black and use the garment black instead. And so in here, in the middle, I do have to put down black ink and then a white base behind it. And then we have that powder to be able to cover up the powder so it's not there. It's a different hand feel that you have. So on a higher end shirt, it's not gonna feel quite like as good as it would be on a uh, DTG on 100% cotton ring spun shirt. And so there's, there's some spots where you can do DTG transfer onto 100% cotton, um, but still printing with DTG can give you much better tonal gradations, much better hand feel uh, that come along with it. Especially even if you're printing onto really inexpensive shirts. Um, these, are, uh, these are right here, next level. We're printing onto 100% ring spun shirts. One of the big challenges you have is you print onto really uh, a lower end shirt that uses an open carded uh, cotton shirt, the way how they, they spin those fibers. There's a lot of lint and a lot of loose fibers. An easy way to tell is if you take a lint roller and you go over the shirt, if that lint roller, the sticky part of it, picks up a lot of fibers, that you gotta be a little bit careful when you use this transfer process. And the reason I say that is this transfer is gonna stick to the shirt. Uh, really well. If you have a shirt that has a lot of loose lint, it's going to stick to that loose lint and over time with a little bit of abrasion may pull those loose lint fibers aren't really attached to the, the fiber of the shirt. That's what the, the transfer is going to be sticking to and it could peel. So using a better quality shirt, uh, certainly it will get good results, but DTG, if you have the ability to, it can give you tremendous print quality, really smooth hand feel to it. It's just a little bit different process. And this is where the exciting part is, Having a machine that only does film transfer means you can't do that. You can't do the direct to garment printing. Having a machine that only does DTG printing means you can't do the polyester uh, really well. You can't uh, do, if you wanted to be able to go to a festival, you don't want to bring the printer, you can't bring your blanks with you. The exciting part, what Paul was, has been showing uh, with this is you're using the existing DTG, uh, Epson DTG equipment you have today. You can do both. So there's no need to really choose. And you can really choose what your customer wants. Do they want the really soft hand feel, the breathability on cotton? Do they want it just simple, just plop it on here, or they want it on 100% uh, more uh, athletic performance apparel? You have the ability, the equipment, if you already have the equipment, the great thing is, is it already has the ability to do this. It's just a matter of using the right, this technique, the powders and the little bit of the, uh, the film. Uh, and I think Paul, as you mentioned, the film, it's not just a, any old piece of film that's that we're using it does have a that matte finish to it has a little bit of that polyester or sorry a, a pre-treat basically is built under that film that's going to make the ink give you that really good, good vibrancy to it and allow that ink to set up so that when we apply that powder uh, that it's going to work really well so i hope this gives quite a bit of a, a good idea of some of the applications uh, that we we can do with the, the film transfer process we're just scratching the surface here i know there's probably a million ideas that people have um, there's some spots where DTG is going to be traditional DTG is going to work better um, for you than the film transfer and there's other spots where the film transfer can be better. The end of the day is you got a machine that can do both and you can really choose what's the most appropriate uh, method and that makes the most sense for the way how your operations and the way how your customers uh, want those products to be. So with that, I'm going to stop talking and I really appreciate the time that you took today. And Paul, I'll leave it to you to, if there's any other closing uh, comments you'd like to make. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, again, uh, we do like to thank everybody for joining us on this webinar today. And if you met, if you like this webinar and want to see more events like this, uh, epson.com forward slash sure color events. So what's great about this page is you can browse by category. So you can pick what printing technology that you are interested in. You'll be able to see all of the upcoming events for that technology, as well as see the archive for all of the past events in case there was one that you missed and you wanted to check out the video for that. Uh, all of those will be on that page. Uh, you can register for future events. That is our, the site right there, epson.com forward slash color events. I'm Paul Morales. This is Tim Check. We very much thank you for joining us today and we hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.